One interesting algorithm I learned recently is a sliding window technique and I'm going to be helping you understand that technique in this video. This technique is a common solution for solving problems that have to do with arrays and sub arrays or strings and substrings. And we're going to use this technique to solve this problem here on lit code minimum size sub array. I'll come back to explain this question in a second, but let's see how the sliding window technique works surface level. So let's say you have an array and you want to loop through this whole array to find a sub array that meets a specific condition one way you can do this is to have nested loops so you have one loop which goes from the beginning to the end of the array and then you would have another loop which would also go from the beginning to the end of the array this loop is going to be nested in this one in your loop you start from a then you loop through a to g again to check if it meets that condition then your second loop b you loop from a to g again in this case, you have nested loops trying to meet a certain condition, but the sliding window technique can help in some or most of those cases. So with a sliding window technique, you define a window and your window can start from A to B. And what you'll be doing in the rest of the solution is that you'll be expanding and compressing your window. So you expand your window to C, then to D, then at some point you'd have to shift the left side of the window to maybe B and then here you shift to E, you shift here and then you keep going until you get to the end and maybe at the time you get to the end you have found your answer but if you haven't found your answer yet then you shift this here to here to here to here and maybe it's a question where your answer doesn't actually exist, you know your answer doesn't exist or maybe your answer exists when your window has this size from the index 3 to the index 6. So this is the surface level idea of a sliding window. You have a window which you are moving from the beginning of the array to the end of the array, checking different conditions until you find the final sub array that meets that condition. How can we apply it to this question here? Given an array of positive integers norms and a positive integer target, return the minimal length of a sub array whose sum is greater than or equal to target and if there is no such sub array return zero here we have an array two three one two four three and we want to find the smallest sub array that is going to add up to seven so in the case of two and three two plus three is five it doesn't meet two three one that is six it still doesn't meet two three one two and that is eight this is a sub array that is greater than or equal to the target but the question is the smallest sub array so we keep moving three one two is six it doesn't still meet three one to 4 is 10 it is a sub array that is equal to or greater than 7 but this length is 4 remember our previous sub array was 4 and this one is also 4 so we'll still keep going until we get to the end so now when you check 1 2 and 4 is 7 this is a sub array that is equal to or greater than the target and this sub array is a length of 3 which is less than 4 so now our minimum length is 3 but we haven't still gotten to the end of the array so we keep checking 2 and 4 is 6 2, 4, 3 is 9. 9 is greater than or equal to 7. The sub array is still a length of 3, but we still have to keep checking until we get to the end of the array. And then when we get to the end of the array, we find that the minimum is actually 2 because we have 4 and 3, which adds up to 7. So this is the smallest sub array that can add up to our target. We can apply the same thing here. 1 plus 4 is 5. It's greater than or equal to the target. The length here is 2. But then when you come here, you can see that 4 is actually enough to meet the target so the smallest length is one which is a sub array with one item then in this case because we don't find any sub array that meets this target we return zero okay let's see how we can apply this solution using a sliding window technique i'm going to show you two solutions in this video the first solution is going to be much longer because i want you to get the idea then in the second solution i'll show you a shorter method it doesn't necessarily mean a faster method just a shorter method okay so here we're going to have our our mean length and I'm going to start this mean length from infinity. I'm starting this mean length from infinity because at the end of my function I'm going to check if mean length is equal to infinity then I know that I never actually found a mean length in my array so that means I'm going to return zero but if it is not infinity then I return mean length. So if this mean length changes at any points in our operation then we know that we actually found a mean length. So remember what I said about window 
you have the left side of the window and you have the right side of the window and let's start our left side from the zero index and our right side from the one index so coming here i'm going to have let left index equal zero and let right index equal one then we're going to get the number at the left index so this is going to be norms left index and we get the number at the right index here i can check if the left number is already greater than or equal to the target if left norm is greater than or equal to the target that means i already found my sub array then i'm going to return one i can also do the same thing for the right norm or right norm is greater than or equal to the target then return one that means i have my sub array with one item i have already found my minimum length i don't need to continue with the rest of the function but if that's not the case then i need to continue so what i would do here now is to find the sum of the left norm and the right norm so let sum equals left norm plus right norm then I'm going to have a while loop. So what I'm going to do here will be to loop from the beginning of the array to the end of the array. And then while I'm looping in that array, I'm going to be shifting my window, either shifting the right side or shifting the left side. So I'm going to have while and my condition is that the left index is less than the norms dot length. So I'm looping from the beginning of the array to the end of the array. Now, while I'm looping, I'm going to be checking is the sum greater than or or equal to the target. I have to check this in each loop because once it is greater than or equal to the target, then I want to keep track of the length of the sub array. So if the sum is greater than or equal to the target, then I'm going to have length of sub array and the length of the sub array is going to be the right index minus the left index plus one. So coming back here, if the left index is zero, and the right index is in this case two then we're going to have two minus zero plus one so that way i can get the length of the sub array to be three and if the left window is here and let's say the right window is here this is at index one this is at index five five minus one is four plus one five then i get the length of this sub array which contains five items then i'm going to check if the length of the sub array is less than the minimum length, then the minimum length is now going to be the length of sub array. But if it is not less than, then we keep our minimum length as what it already is. The next thing we want to do now is to reduce our window. We have found the target, but it doesn't mean that we have found the minimum window size, right? So in our loop, we start from here, then we go here, or let's say at this point, we find the sum to be greater than the target. We can't just stop here. We now have to reduce the left because we want to find the minimum length. We want the window to be as small as possible. So now we're going to move this window from here to this point here, and then we're going to check is this also greater than or equal to the target to move the left index the first thing you have to do is that when you move the index from here to here you have to do something about a like in our case where we are adding things when we move it from here to this point that means we have to subtract a so that we can have the sum of b and c so here i'm going to say sum is equal to sum minus the left num move the left side of window and in moving the left side of the window we're going to remove the left number from that sum i can do it like this or i can also just do it sum minus equal left norm then when i do this i'm now going to move the index of the left side of the window so left index plus plus and that's it for this part if the sum is greater than or equal to the target but now when we move the left in this case we're now going to check is the sum of b and c equal to the target if it is not equal to the target then what is the next thing we're going to do we're going to move the right side of the window because we haven't gotten to the end of the array right we're now going to move this from here to here then we add b c and d to see if it meets the condition in our case if it is greater than target if the sum is not greater than or equal to the target what we're now going to do is we'll increase the right index Coming back to this left norm, instead of having it as left norm, I'm just going to have norms left index so that I don't get confused with the left norm. So in this case, I'm now going to increase the right index. And when I increase the right index to D, that means I now have to add D to the sum that we already have. Our current sum is B plus C. So now I'm going to add D to that sum. So here I'm now going to say sum plus equal norms right 
index. Here I am moving the right side of window. So when you move left side of window, you remove the number at the left side, then increase the index. In the case of the right side of the window, you increase the index first before you add that number here. But this isn't all we have to do. We now have to consider some specific situations. So let's say in our case, the right window is here but it is still not equal to the sum what is going to happen when you increase the right side of the window well that means this is now going to come here and in this case we now have undefined right so we need to be able to treat the specific situation where the right side of the window gets to the end of the array so here instead of just doing right index plus plus and adding it i am first going to check if the right index plus one is less than the length of the array, then I know that I can still increase the right side of the window. So I'm going to put this in here. So this condition is a check that gives me the guarantee that I can increase the right index and then I can add that to the sum. But then if this is not the case, it means that we have gotten to the end of the array. And if we have gotten to the end of the array, what do we do? So let me come back to this diagram. So if we've gotten to the end of the array and this sub array doesn't meet our sum condition, well, we have two options. Either we're going to move this from here to here to here to here to here until we get to the end or in our case we actually don't need to do that because if the sum of this sub array doesn't meet our condition that means this isn't going to meet our condition this also isn't going to meet our condition this isn't going to meet our condition right so what we can say here now is if we cannot move the right side of the window then we can just break from our loop and then coming to the end of our function we check if the mean length is infinity that means the mean length never changed and that means we never actually found a minimum sub array in that case we return zero but if it is not infinity then we can return the minimum length now i can run this to see if we're missing anything all our test cases pass so in the case of two three one two four three so we kept going until our window got to this point of four and three then we kept track of it as two now because four and three is greater than or equal to seven which means it is greater than or equal to the target we kept track of the minimum length as two then we removed the left and increased the index which means at this point our window is here the left side of the window is at three the right side of the window is at three so it comes here is three greater than or equal to the target no it is not then we come to this part here then we check can we still move the right side of the window because we have already gotten to the end of the array we cannot move the right side of the window so we break and our minimum length stays at two and then for case three target of 11 we got to the end of the array we didn't find a minimum length so we didn't even need to move the left side of the window anymore if this cannot give us our target then just break out of the loop now let's submit this to see our final solution this passed you can also check the complexity the complexity here is o of n now let me give you the second solution it's just going to involve fewer lines of code so i'm going to take all of this part out here we're still going to keep our minimum length as infinity then here we're going to have our sum as zero and then we're going to have the left index at zero then here i'm going to use a for loop and i'm going to keep track of the right index so let the right index be zero if the right index as long as it is less than the norms dot length and then we increase the right index so this is similar to what we did with the while loop the case of this for loop is that we can put all our condition and increments here instead of doing it in the block so the right index is going to start at zero which means that the window is actually going to start with the left at a and with the right at a then the first thing i do is to add the number at the right side of the window so sum plus equals norms right index i'm now going to have a while loop in that while loop it's going to run as long as the sum is greater than or equal to the target and this is where i'm going to move the left side of the window remember again we want to have the smallest window possible but well, before we move the left side of the window we want to keep track of the length first right so here again sub array length is equals to right index minus left index plus one then i'm going to check is the sub array length less than the minimum length if it is then the minimum length is equals to sub array length instead of doing it like this i can also use mat.min so i can say minimum length is equals to mat.min i pass the existing minimum length and then i pass sub array 
length. So this is the same thing with the if condition that we did earlier. So when we have kept track of the minimum length, we will now move the left side of the window. And remember moving the left side of the window means you first subtract the number at the left side and then you move the left index. This is basically everything. So coming back to this diagram, our loop starts from here, right? And we're going to be moving the right side. So at this point, sum is zero. We add A to the sum. Is it greater than or equal to the target? It is not. We move here. Is it greater than or equal to the target? Let's say it is not. We move here. And as we move here, now our sum is A plus B plus C. Because if you remember in the code, we are adding the number on the right. So let's say at this point it is greater than or equal to the target. We want our window to be as small as possible, right? So we're now going to move the left side. Well, first we keep track of the minimum length. The minimum length in our case is one, two, three. So here we now move the left side of the window. When we move the left side of the window, if the sum is still greater than or equal to the target, that is why we have this while loop here. So as long as the sum is still greater than or equal to the target, then we'll move this again. But let's say it's not equal, we'll keep this here. Then that is how we keep going to the right. Is this target not yet? Is this target? Oh, this is the target. Is this still target? Yes. Then move forward. Is this still target? No. Then we keep going until we get to the right. So this is the basic solution here. In this case, we focus on the right and then move the left only when needed. This is again basically what we did before just that in that case the code was longer. I wanted you to be able to see through every step but this is a shorter way of doing the same thing and if we should run this again okay we have uh, case 1, case 2, case 3 and if we should submit this the previous one was 51 milliseconds. This is 56 milliseconds. I actually don't trust this timing. The reason for that is if I should press submit again, I'm going to get a different time. I could even get 46. So I don't actually trust that. But one thing I can trust is the complexity and I have reached analyzing rate limit for today. So, okay, I can't pay. I don't know what the complexity is here. Well, previously I did it and the complexity was still O of N. Yeah, it was basically O of N. So anyways, I hope that this video helps you understand sliding window. I would also make another video talking about another question and still applying the same sliding window technique. But I hope that this video helps you understand how using a window to move through the array is a more effective way or even a faster way than having to loop through the array multiple times. One item loop through, second item loop through, like having multiple loops. That is longer, but using this window, it's easier to just control your window, get your condition keep track of your minimum length in our case or keep track of whatever value you need to keep track of until you get to the end of the array. I'll be making this a series trying out more liquid questions so if you're interested in these questions and the solutions please subscribe give this video a like and share it for any other person who might find it helpful.